Ladies and gentlemen, today you're visiting one of the most significant cities in the history of the United States and an important contributor to the history of the black African Americans. My name is Adrian Azera, and I'm a student in the African American Studies program at the College of Charleston. I'm here at what is reserved, referred to as the low country of South Carolina, where during slave trade, 40 to 60% of enslaved Africans arrived in America at the ports nearby, and in particular, the Port of Charleston, at what was then the newly built Gadsden War. While visiting our city, be aware that many scholars believe that Charleston was where it all began, meaning that all of the history and culture associated with black African Americans began right here. Charleston had an African-American majority during the colonial period and for most of its 340-year history, up until the Great Migration of the early 20th century. So, it stands to reason that Charleston offers unique historical and cultural traditions, as well as some of the best social and economic examples related to the African-American. Some of you might be asking, what is African-American studies? This video is about describing what it represents and how it became a new academic field of study at many universities, spanning the origins and history of the black slaves, their American experience, with the hardships they endured, and the socioeconomic conditions they faced. In colonial times, Charleston became one of the richest cities because of its strong agricultural success with cotton, tobacco, and later on, rice. The plantations were extensive, as you can see by the gate of the Mansfield Plantation, dating back to 1718. Can you believe that the buildings and main house are about one and a half miles from this gate? Pretty awesome, right? During these times, the slaves made a lot of money for the plantation owners and had no legal rights to land or other basic rights like citizenship. They were working like mules and had no social identity or confidence in their people. It wasn't until after the Civil War that things started changing. In the late 19th century, after the war, the Reconstruction period and the abolishment of slavery Blacks gained the right to vote, and new laws were developed to protect the newly freed slaves. It was at this time that intense academic efforts were made by the black activists and other important black public figures to research the origins and history of the African Americans to develop philosophies and dreams that they could relate to. It was the beginning of a new focus on the study of their condition and a basis for what much later became the Educational Curriculum for African American Study classes. This was very important because the slaves had been totally dependent on their masters and knew nothing about taking care of themselves. Strong racial tensions existed, even if they were men and women. Writers, philosophers, historians, and even scientists looked and documented their history and experiences, as well as the study of their art, their music, and their food. This later expanded into the study of their origins not only in America, but in Africa, where they came from. More subjects were uncovered to give them identity, like the native tribes and cultures they originated from. What became quote-unquote African American studies was built upon the work of black intellectuals and early pioneers in the first half of the 20th century. These African American leaders became educated and began writing literary works to give the blacks a sense of identity and belonging and to improve their condition in modern society. Black studies and black history were critical in advancing the black community to protect their rights and to develop their independence. Soon, 
There were black politicians representing them with specific political agendas to support the needs of the black communities and to help them gain confidence to start small businesses. It was in the 1960s and 1970s that educational programs and college departments dedicated to African American studies began. Black student and faculty activism and d demonstrations finally led to the creation of the first African American Studies Department at the San Francisco State College. It was a very hard earned success. The pictures you are seeing now are of the doors leading into the Avery Research Center for African American History and Culture, which is currently closed for renovation. This historical building is located on the campus of College of Charleston. For those of you who are not familiar with this college, it is a nationally recognized public college founded in 1770. It is among the country's top schools and the oldest educational institute south of Virginia and the 13th oldest in the United States. During the colonial period, Wealthy families sent their sons abroad for higher education. By the mid 18th century, many leading citizens supported the idea of establishing an institute of higher education within the colony. We are now in the heart of the city of Charleston. The College of Charleston was the first higher education facility developed at that time. Now, the Avery Research Center's mission is to preserve and promote the unique history and culture of the African peoples with emphasis on Charleston and the South Carolina Low Country. Avery's archives hold 4,000 records originating from and documenting colonial period and African American history. Its museum's exhibits reflect the diverse African American people and the people of the African continent. During the Reconstruction Era, the Avery Center was used to train young African-American adults in professional careers and leadership roles. It was the hub for Charleston's African-American community from 1865 to 1954. The creation of the African-American Studies Program and educational curriculum across the country gave the Black American people an identity and a place in American history and American society. I chose the Avery Center to close on this point. Almost all African Americans can trace their origins through the archives which reside in this building. That's pretty impressive and quite a powerful connection for the black people and whose ancestors were slaves in America. Through their suffering, America prospered. I've been working with the Charleston Tours Group to provide a video which acts like an introduction to the tours. Which part of this video, if any, did you find most informative? I like learning about the uh, Black Power Movement and how African Americans gained uh, civil rights. Nice. Have you ever visited any other states in South besides South Carolina? No, I'm actually a college student here, so I came to Charleston just to be here. Okay. Have you ever been to the Avery Research Center? No, I actually haven't. Can you believe that? I've been a student here for four years and I haven't even visited. Well, I really encourage you to. It's very informative. Will. I probably will. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice day. Hey, I'm Brock Ferraro. Is this your first time in Charleston? Yes, this is. When watching the video that I made for Charleston Tours, what was the most interesting thing that you found about this area that you never knew? I really thought the port was interesting, knowing that the first slaves coming to America traveled there first. Have you ever that. studied African American studies in your past? I have not, but knowing these, and knowing this information, I would definitely like to look further into it, especially in Charleston. Thank you. Have a nice day. Of course.